there's all these locals in Austin, and they just keep claiming lies about me. You know, I mean, yeah. uh, I, I mean, they just keep saying I'm in their business, I'm doing things to them, I'm, I'm, do, I'm, I'm hurting them, and, and they call me up and say you've done this and that, and I'm like, I don't even know what you're talking about. Yeah, uh, and they don't. Annoying. Well, yeah, exactly, and so then it builds a type of delusion, and we see that with the delusion of the fear of the Muslims, or delusion of the fear of this group or that yeah. group. I mean, I mean, I mean, I think it's more of a spirit or a you know a program, a download, not even so much a government operation. Obviously, some of it is, uh, and 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 it's just so sad to see I'm with them, you, I believe it. to see them in their hyper competitiveness. They're just jealous that I'm able to reach so many people or that you're able to reach so many people. And so they involve yeah. themselves in this infighting and then they make us close our doors to them and then they blame us for closing our doors to them when they are the ones attacking us and making stuff up. I, I agree. I've also tracked the same thing back to envy. I, I agree wholeheartedly because I've given it so much thought, you know, since I became more publicly known, of course, then I had to address this particular backlashing issue. And I've tracked it to envy. I've tracked it to the fact that they are like the deer in the headlights. They're scared to lose, you know, what they think is their security by getting into knowledge because knowledge threatens you. Knowledge asks you to think more, to think again, to reevaluate everything you know. And this is, of course, extremely threatening to most people who've just, you know, felt, hey, good, I was just falling asleep. I was just rolling over there to go to sleep and, and have everything be secure. And now you guys come along and tell me about the Illuminati or you tell me about, you know, the, 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 what's waiting for me tomorrow in a dystopia if I don't get up and do something. You, you, you put doubt on me about my elected leaders and so forth and so on. You tell me to read. You tell me to study. You know, and this is a big threat to those people who are just so apathetic and narcissistic. So, of course, they're, you know, they backlash. I always take it as a positive sign, you know, in the last segment. Well, no, I agree. But, 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 I mean, I agree with you, but I'm saying people People we've even woken up. They'll admit I've woken them up or you've woken them up, but then they'll still say we're bad. Well, you judge a tree by its fruits. How do we wake yeah, up so many, but then we're bad, and then they manufacture all these crimes we've supposedly committed so that they have a rationalization to make up more crap about us? Here we go. Radio Network. Okay, we got about 51 minutes left with Michael Desarian, great researcher, michaeldesarian.com. Michael, break down the technological control grid, the microwave guns, the face scanning cameras, the poison in the food and water, all of it admitted, all of it being intensified, one in 33 having cancer, now one in two in men, one in three in women, you know, just, I mean, the plagues are upon us, it is engineered, uh, break down this uh, grid. Well, this, uh, you know, like I said, coming out of the work of Jim Keith and the people who had more of a look at this technotronic world, and you even have some of the insiders talking about that they can't wait for this, people of the Bertrand Russell School, you see, and the whole bread and circus clan, the intellectual types. What I've been studying is more the elite type, the people at the top of the pyramid. What is, it, what is their thinking? What do they want? How do they see mankind? You know, the people coming out of the Thomas Malthus School, the people coming out of the Frankfurt Schools and the Tavistock Institute. And these highbrows who have always looked at us as some sort of subhuman, animalistic kind of being. I mean, I don't want to get into it right now, but my work even t tracks the whole genetic interference with mankind back thousands of years ago. So what we're seeing now with the, the industrial age, and now we're in the silicon age, and we have all these MITs and Sun corporations, you see, and all of this effort to look at our genes and to present the gene to us in a very subliminally negative way, as some sort of mechanical uh, construct, that is just, you know, like it's a dirty, thing. it's broken, we're bad. And for those that don't know, they would, uh, 2,000 years ago in Rome, breed large, brutish, quote, dumb uh, Germans, Gauls, and others, you know, together when the slaves were mainly white. And then uh, it's openly in the slave manuals, very politically incorrect to say, but it's actually history. I'm not saying it worked, but they actually did also breed people in this country to be large and stupid, according to what the official documents say. Go ahead. That's right. They're, they're, this is where they're at. This is what you know. Jim Keith's work really alerted me to the Doctor Delgados, these Frankensteinian, you know, uh, Bella Lugosi creatures that you know haunt the technical world that have huge amount of funding. And what really caught my eye, because as I told you before, my introduction to a lot of this had been through art and through symbolism. I started to notice that the symbolism that these you know Alex De Grays and these individuals who are now behind the whole genome project and many of the other technological sort of projects and organizations, right from the time of Francis Crick doing his main research in, in the Templar zones of London, and then the first genetic experiments being done in the Templar areas of Scotland near Rosslyn. You know, this kind of stuff started to, irrit, you know, started to like uh, raise a red flag for me, because here we're up against the Templar symbolism again. Here we're seeing the Holy Grail symbolism again. Here we're seeing the man in white with the red crosses. What is all of this? What has science got to do with any of this? So then I started you know, tracking that, 
and got into the work of Jim Keith and others who start talking about that, look, the assault on the human race has been on consciousness, but it's also been on biology. And anyone who stands up against the FDA, the AMA, any of the Dr. R Raymond Royal Rifes, the Wilhelm Reichs, the Walter Russells, you know, the Max Gersons, the, uh, the list is endless of anyone who stands up to say, here's how he real healing happens, here's how you get, you know, back to your, your center, both not only legal sovereignty in a social sense, but spiritual sovereignty, you know, they, they suppress and molest those people, they burn their works, they purge them, they do not let their knowledge be known. So the, some of the attacks on the human being, you see, we have to understand the nature of evil and, and, and understand the hydra that is not just attacking in one way. In fact, often, as, as Archibald Wavell, the general, said, watch what the right hand is doing because you're not seeing the left hand. They may present in front of you some sort of bugbear, some sort of, uh, you know, uh, what's it, it's like Wizard of Oz shadow for you to be, you know, shaking in front of, but the real enemy is coming at you from the back. So this is what I've also been studying, and I really do believe that this post-human world is upon us. Whether the see the global village is upon us. I mean that that comes out of my studies of Fabianism and study of the common purpose, and all of that. So, but the global village can be many things. They may not even put chains on you. They may not even build a wall around you. But you can still inhabit this planet as a global slave in the global village. There's many ways of attaining this, and through these RFI chips, the whole situation of the whole digital kingdom opening up for us. This is what's going at breakneck speed. Since the sort of falling back of the main military budgets, we're not, not too much falling back on it, but as obviously they scale back from Star Wars and these other things, where do you think all that money is going? That money is now going into the whole technological you know, world to create for human race, a, a, basically a cyber purgatory, which is going to be what supplants this ending that I've talked about in the next four to five years, you're going to see a, a sort of a, a countdown to extinction of all the traditions, all the accepted norms that our forefathers work for, that are, we've understood, that our grandparents and our parents, this is both an education, but specifically in medical. Just look at the way that children are medicated up the eyeballs right now. You know, I mean, the complete destruct. There's even one uh, slug from uh, uh, Stanford University who wants to start introducing the, uh, you know, the anti- uh, you know, the ADD uh, pills, the drugs, before children even show the symptoms of it. He already wants to put them on that. No, no, no. The there's already the drugging world. of children in utero if they, quote, come right. from poor families in Oregon, which is eugenics. Right, this, exactly. This goes back to Mari Stokes, right back to the whole Fabian situation, you know, and uh, back to the... Uh, and what it is, whole, is these are really murderous, bloodthirsty control freaks who just have disdain and arrogance for everyone. And I've actually talked to some of these top scientists and elitists from these big families. The, the, they're almost mentally retarded in a way. They're gibbering, they're, they're goblin-like, uh, and they're not even that smart. They're just vicious, vicious little demons. Well, the more empty you are, remember, it's like Wilhelm Reich's little man, the more little you are, the more fearful you are, the more that you need to exercise these controls. That is the Wizard of Oz shadow situation. And people need to wake up, turn on the lights, and not be afraid of that type of thing. It ties into the awakening that you spoke of, you know, in the previous uh, segment here. And that is happening. It needs to continue to happen. And as I say, I'm very adamant of people do not territorialize this knowledge. First of all, this is an alternative subject that we deal with. It is not mainstream. It is not fundamentalistic. You're not going to territorialize it. It does not belong to you. It is knowledge, and you cannot bring the same old old world you know, paradigms of own and control into this area. You don't belong. Go and study. Go back to school, you know, and, and go back into the orthodox world is my message to those yeah, people. Yeah, I've noticed you people always try to... Information. I notice people always, in our own, you know, quote, you know, awakening movement, you know, uh, reality movement, uh, whatever you want to call it, uh, they always try to... Ter to territorialize it about who said when 9-11 was going to happen first or who discovered this or who discovered that and me I'm always happy to have folks on give them credit but I do that almost neurotically just to please those that are keeping score on who came up with this or who thought of this first I mean I have trailblaze thousands of things coin terms but it means nothing to me I'm hoping people use it I'm hoping people expand on my knowledge as I expanded on others stand on my shoulders as I stood on others but you're right there's this obsession with territorializing uh, and I've done the opposite I've said make copies of my films do whatever you want use my material well, I, don't I, even I, give I me credit you. because it's about That's survival I but, but, but again People can wake up to the New World Order, but they haven't woken up to all the conditioning they were already under, and so they've got to break that as well. Well, they gotta, they're walking towards, see, the word utopia 
uh, if you actually look up the meaning of the word utopia as it was first meant to mean, it actually means no place. And this, of course, then opened up, this would not have been understood when Francis Bacon, you know, coined the term or used it. It certainly makes a lot of sense now because we have virtual kingdoms. We have cyber, you know, uh, uh, purgatories awaiting for us. We have these virtual reality states in which man, so divorced from his own center, so much divorced from his own spirit, not only divorced but running headlong away in the opposite direction from his spirit, what do you think is waiting there for him? These, you know, the, these individuals are wanting to create a perfect social global village in which you can upload your own consciousness. So the Internet is, you know, uh, one aspect of this. It's not negative, but it's an extension of the cerebral spinal system, as many scholars have shown. The There's point a, is, is the this. way they're engineering the technocracy is to dominate and subjugate and dumb down. So we're not demonizing te technology one way or the other, but the architecture no. of it has been designed for bad. There is, there is no doubting that, and we're being inserted into the false reality when our whole development is about this.